Um, I want to read from uh, the Holy Word of God. Uh, I want to read from maybe John 15. Mm -hmm. These are the words of Jesus. Um, I like it because it's like this. When a loved person is separated from us, or when they are going to a far off place where it's no longer the same, you won't see them physically. There is an emotional attachment. And when Lord Jesus said these words, he was still in the body. He didn't have the glorified body. He was still in the natural body. So he was going through emotions too. And these were like parting words, so precious things, so precious. For me, growing up, these scriptures, especially John 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, I, I, I used to read them like crazy, maybe 100 times a day, but over and over, just these chapters. It's, it's almost like I, I memorize them because of my so frequent reading. The point being, they give us power because these are right from the word of God, uh, the mouth of Lord Jesus when he was on this earth. Of course, all scripture is Holy Spirit breathed. There's no difference, but still, uh, they, some of these convey the message Lord Jesus wanted his church, his beloved to know. The point of Lord Jesus saying all this was, to comfort the church, to comfort his people, his children. He knew billions are going to follow him later. And that's why he said all this, because he mentioned in 17, Father, I pray not only for these, but for them all as well, who will believe on these teachings. So that includes all of us later. So let me read from John chapter 15. Lord Jesus says, I'm the true wine and my father is the wine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I've spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. Without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. I'm going to pause here just because of time. Uh, I just want to share a few thoughts on this. Uh, but we have the scripture with us. Since, uh, after this call, just read through the whole chapter. It's a blessing. I still read them over and over again, especially 13 till. I, I also like like six, seven, eight, pretty much the whole John, I would say, where the uh, in chapter 10, Lord Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And chapter three, it's all about, you know, God so loved the world. And uh, he gave his chapter four, uh, Samaritan woman at the well. And, uh, you know, all these ch chapter nine, he talks about that uh, blind man. Uh, who, you know, uh, the people left, uh, rolled him out of the synagogue and all this. But anyway, so you see how I can remember all this? It's just... Yeah, it's, it's a, I love the book of John. It's just John, yes. very good. Yes, it comes out a lot. Anyway, here, uh, Simple Truth Saints, we all know this, but I, it's just a reminder for all of us. Jesus is plainly telling his disciples and all of us, Except we abide in Jesus, our life is waste. He's saying you can do nothing except you abide in it. You may say, oh my God, look at all these people, how they are living. 
right? Jesus is saying, that's nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. It's over. Except you abide in me, you will not be able to bear fruit. There are all kinds of people living on this planet. Growing up, we were taught by our parents as examples, right? Hey, work hard, get a degree, get some education, or your life will be full of struggles. You will not be able to find a job and all these other things. And some people, they used to show like, if you don't study or if you don't get a good degree, then, you know, you will have to work hard and you will live like, you know, other people. And there are some people who have all the money, but still they live like animals, you know, in many ways. Uh, no good thing fun, living in sin. I know a lot of people when we go pass out tracks on streets in Chicago, especially during the nights. Man, you should see this. People are unconscious because they are so drunk mm -hmm. and drugs, living like animals. Mm -hmm. We think like that because we feel, okay, I'm sane. I'm not like that. But Jesus is saying, if you are living a life without me, it's worse than you living like an animal because it's no life at all. You may think you're having fun and life. It's just like those other people who are out on the drugs, who are injecting themselves, who are on high, who are thinking they're having a lot of fun. But these other people who, who are looking at their fallen state, living on the streets, not clothed properly, vomiting stuff, throwing up. We feel, oh, they're living like animals just like that. When a spiritual person who is alive unto God sees these other rest of the people who are not so alive unto God, who are dead towards anything related to God, Jesus is saying they're dead. There's no life at all. Forget about living like animals. Dead, dead. There is no life. It's a sorry state. Saints, let us all examine ourselves. Where we are. Are we alive unto God? Or are we living a life of reprobate? And sin. And happy like those people taking drugs. And they're thinking, oh. Or are we addicted? Unable to wiggle ourselves out of this addiction, call upon Jesus. Lord Jesus is there for us. He's there waiting, ready to help. Because Jesus said, I will leave all those self-righteous people who don't need me. They're already worshiping me. I will leave everybody. I will come to you who is stuck in thorns who is lost. I'll come seeking you. Dear child of God, whoever is listening to this message, if that is you today, if the church has rejected you, if people have rejected you saying you are bad and you are no good, you are fallen, oh, you are always. Jesus is waiting there for you. He wants you to take back. Can you come to him tonight? He is waiting with open arms. He wants you to be found. He will give you strength. The sure way to have strength and power over sin and addiction is read the word of God daily. Not just like blind reading, but make an effort to seek him, to know what the word is saying. It's easy. Come on. It will deliver you out of all your addiction. Jesus said, with God, all things are possible. He can even right now turn all the time back. Go back to the original creation. Turn it all back and undo what Adam and Eve did. He can do that. Because Jesus said, with God, all things are possible. But if he does it, there is no representation of how much God loves human beings. There is no 
display. There is no expression of what love is. People or anyone will not understand. Anyway, there's so much more. But Jesus is saying, saints, without me, you can do nothing. Abide in me and abide in him alone. We can do even anything. And Jesus is saying, but what does this abide mean, saints? He explains it if you read further. He says, if you abide in him, you will obey his commandments. And God the Father loves it when you obey the commandments of Jesus. What does it mean to obey the commandments of Jesus? It's not rocket science. It's easy. Simple thing to obey the commandment of Jesus is, if I give you 10 lists, then that list will end there. A list of 10 items if I give. That's not the commandments. Obey the commandments means whatever Jesus said, the summary of all of it. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. Love your neighbor as thyself. That's it. End of the story. Walking in the spirit, I would say. I would summarize it as obeying the commandment is walking in the spirit. As many as were led by the spirit of God are called the children of God. So saints, uh, just take your Bible every day. Simple. And keep reading it and spend some time daily. Have family prayers every day. Have family prayers in your house. Bring it back. Start it today. Do not underestimate it. I have seen all the families who have family prayer. All of them supernaturally blessed. I don't know how it happens. Yeah, they went through struggles. But all of them supernaturally blessed. They have Jesus. You may say, oh, I know families who didn't have family prayer. They're blessed. Too. Yeah, but they don't have Jesus. They die today. They'll be suffering in hell forever and forever. And forever is a long time. And this is the guarantee. There, are, there is only one guarantee the Bible gives. That is eternal life or wages of sin is death. There's no in-between, saints. There's no in-between. God wants all of us or none of us. You're either 100% gods or 100% devil. It, there's nothing like, okay, I'm 99% Christian or 99.9999999%. May God speak to each and every one of us. God bless you. Blessed be the name of the Lord.